I remember back in the 90s how big mech stuff was, like mech games, mech anime, you know, collecting figures, Gundam, stuff like that. I mean, a lot of that stuff is still popular to today, but that was one thing that guided me with some video games. Like, hey, there's like a big ass mech on the cover. I might want to play it. And one game I remember was Cybernator, and that game was pretty sweet. And that's what we're talking about today. So Cybernator released in the North America regions, US and whatnot, and in PAL regions in the early 90s, and it was published by Konami. Now, that's not what the game originally was called. It was Assault Suits Vulcan in Japan. And like typical fashion in the 90s, sometimes these translations weren't that great. But then there's other things about the game that was changed. So. From Japan to North America and PAL regions, the in-stage animated portraits during dialogue was just completely removed. If you look at the Japanese version of the game, it's like you're 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 playing a movie, you're playing an anime. Like you have these little animated, you know, dialogue scenes going on while you're playing the game. And that's completely gone from the North American and PAL region versions. And then certain dialogue scenes were just removed. Like it's fairly quiet. Just the action during a lot of the, the stages, kind of weird when you go back and forth between the two. And I, I do think it loses something from that. Just kind of crazy. A lot of the names were changed. A lot of the, the dialogue was changed. There was a scene with the president that was changed in the North American and PAL regions. There was an after credit secret message that was removed. It's kind of crazy, right? So Cybernator, it's not one of the most expensive games in the world if you still want to, you know, grab a copy. Maybe like 40 bucks loose, $100 complete in box. But the one thing I do like is uh, Retrobit. I, I really like a lot of the stuff Retrobit does. I'm not going to, you know, play around here. But they've done a lot of retro re-releases where they either fix things in the game, do new translations, bring really hard-to-find games back out. I know it's not for everyone, but I think it's pretty sweet that they do that kind of stuff. And that's what they're doing with Cybernator. They're bringing Assault Suits Vulcan to the US and to Europe, anywhere in the world if you wanna buy this, right? So as of this video going live, they did give me a heads up about some of this information here uh, that I wanna talk about and share with you guys. But those pre-orders are live now, and they kind of went back to doing two versions this time. For a while, it was just like, hey, one single version that you could buy. This time they're doing two and the price difference isn't crazy. So we'll go over that in a moment here as far as what each edition comes with. But with Assault Suits Vulcan, they're not just taking the Japanese version and releasing it here. No, it's it's got a brand new official English translation to go along with it. So that's really sweet because like I said, between the North American PAL region versions of Cybernator comparing it to Assault Suits Vulcan, there's a lot missing there. It just doesn't feel the same. It's the same game. Don't get it twisted, but it just, it's it's lacking. So for them to have an English version come out, I think it's pretty sweet. These retro re-releases, I mean, I, I really dig what they're doing. Quality has continually gone up with these guys. They've been doing an amazing job for some years now. But the two uh, editions that they're releasing, there's gonna be a like a collector's edition, a deluxe edition, and then a standard edition. So with the collector's edition, you're gonna have like a hard embossed slip case that houses everything, all the extras, the game, the case, all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna get a numbered deluxe magnetic hardcover cartridge packaging. I'm assuming they'll have like a little holographic sticker on there. Seems like that's what they've been doing lately. Um, instead of like the little certificate of authenticity, which I think is fine. A little less, you know, papers in the packaging. Just have that nice sticker there with the number. I think that's cool. And then the cartridge is going to be this uh, Armor Gold. And, you know, they have the proper voltage on these cartridges. Just put that out there. We've known that. They've been, you know, being on top of their game with that stuff for a long while now. But the shells they use, I, I don't know, like, where they get this material from. I've compared it to other, like, Super Nintendo cartridge shells that I've bought in the past to like replace shells, stuff like that, or for projects and whatnot. And they're always like, like you could squeeze them and they kind of can wobble around. They're pliable, but with the the cartridge shells that they use, they're like they're heavier. They're they're more hard. I, I don't know what they're using here, but it's a nice material. These cartridges do look great. So you get all that, and then you're gonna get a acrylic stand that has like the mech, uh, the Vulcan like a diagram type thing uh, with a little stand. Kind of neat. Some people like that stuff, some don't. 
it's all up to you. You're paying a little bit extra to get this bigger bundle of stuff. If you don't like all this, there is a standard edition. Then you're also getting, that's not all. We're still getting more in this edition. You're getting a full colored manual. Love full colored manuals. I mean, even if it was black and white, I, I wouldn't be tripping, but they do the full color, all the artwork and stuff like that. Miss manuals was always a big part of the experience with gaming for me back in the 80s and 90s, but not so much anymore. Kind of sucks. You know, even like strategy guides. I love that stuff, man. Having a physical thing to just take a look at and read when I'm not playing the game. When you bought the game at the store and you're on the ride home, you know, especially like you were with your parents or something, you bust that game out and start reading the manual. Learn everything about it before you get home. Be prepared. You ain't doing that anymore. I mean, you got the internet and stuff, but man, it's just a different experience. Okay, we still got more. You get a commemorative coin, then you get a little Sound Bites keychain. Uh, I don't really know what to think about the keychain, but that's kind of neat. I mean, I like that over stickers. Like, you know, a lot of times we get like stickers and stuff. I don't care about stickers. So just be straight up with you. I don't care what company. It could be Retrobit. could be your mom. doesn't matter who. You're putting stickers and everything. I don't care about stickers, man. Some people do. That's fine. If you love stickers, thumbs up to you. I don't like stickers. I think it's a waste of uh, production materials. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. What am I going to do with stickers? Put on my Trapper Keeper? What the frick? I, I don't know, man. Some people like it. That's fine. No offense. Hopefully, you know, you don't get all butt hurt. But yeah. Hey, I'd rather have these little trinkets than stickers. Give me a break. But okay, the Sound Bites uh, keychain that, you know, Retrobit worked, worked with Sound Bites to get this produced. Uh, it's officially licensed by Messiah Games. And it has uh, five gameplay sounds from the game. So that's, that's kind of neat. I'm curious to see how that works out or how it sounds. I mean, it just reminds me of little things pressing in it like burps or makes some weird noise. I, I don't know, whatever, man. But you got sounds from the game. So that, that, that might be pretty dope. So next up, we do have the standard edition, which we've already covered what comes with it because it's essentially the same stuff as the collector's edition, just minus the trinkets and minus the little slipcover thing. You get the numbered deluxe magnetic hardcover uh, packaging the case. Super Nintendo size, like if you have complete in box games, matches right along with that stuff. But the material is like, it's stiffer. It's it's more um, durable than these old cardboard boxes. And it, you know, a little magnet opens up. I love the presentation. So you get that, you get the game, you get the full color manual with the standard edition. Price difference between the two, Standard edition is $59.99, so 60 bucks. And then the collector's edition is $79.99. If you put $20 value on all the extras, the presentation, it looks like uh, the uh, all the extras come in like another case that goes into that slip cover. That's the way it looks in the uh, the pictures I'm looking at. So man, yeah, if you put $20 value on the sound bites thing, the, the, the extra packaging, the acrylic stand, the coin, great. If you don't think that's worth $20 to you, but you still want to get this game, you got the standard edition. The choice is yours. The power is in your hands. So links down below to uh, places you could pre-order this from. Do appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>